If I was given a farewell address, what am I going to be able to say to you after having served you uh, for eight years? And here's what I think I'll be able to say. One, we will have restored the American dream. Uh, I started off working uh, minimum wage jobs. No one would have thought I would end up being elected a congressman, being governor, running for president, none of that. But it was in America where I understood, and I had dreams. I was When we were at Fenway Park, one of the guys was like, when you were a kid, were you thinking about running for president or, or playing Major League Baseball? I'm like, Major League Baseball, 100%, no question. But, you know, you got to face reality and some of that. So I believed in this country, we're losing the American dream, and so we'll restore it. You're going to be able to get ahead again. You're not going to be crushed with interest rates, inflation. Uh, you're going to have access to cheap, abundant, and affordable energy because we will have opened up all of our domestic energy for production. Our country will be more secure as a result of that, and we'll be better off as a country. We'll also be able to say that we have restored the sovereignty of our country. You will have enforceable borders, both the North and the South border. We will have put the military on the border. Yes, we will have constructed the border wall. We will have treated the Mexican drug cartels like foreign terrorist organizations and held them accountable for what they're doing to this country once and for all. We'll also be able to say that our country is, in fact, the world's leading superpower. We will have a revitalized U.S. military, and we will have successfully fended off the threat posed by our most greatest threat, the Chinese Communist Party. We will be uh, ensure that this century remains an American century. We'll also be able to say that our school systems are dedicated to educating kids, not indoctrinating kids. We're going to focus on the basics. We're going to focus on teaching kids to read, write, add, subtract, math, science. We're not going to be teaching them that there are 37 genders. We're not going to be teaching kindergartners that they can change their gender. Uh, and we're not going to have ideological indoctrination. But what we are going to have is a renewed emphasis on American civics. People need to understand about the founding principles of our country, the Constitution, what it means to be an American. We need to protect the rights of parents to direct the education and upbringing of their children, and we should have school choice in every jurisdiction in this country so that parents, particularly low-income parents, have a chance for their kids to get ahead. We'll also be able to say that whether you live in a red state or a blue city, criminals are held responsible for their crimes in this country again. We will have taken care of these radical prosecutors that release people back on the street, uh, let the inmates run the asylum, and have caused communities to fracture. Every American family uh, should have the right to live and raise their family in peace and security from coast to coast, and we will restore, have restored the rule of law in this country. Uh, the other thing we'll be able to say is that we've restored the Constitution of the United States to its rightful place at the center of our national life. That means having a limited government that works alongside us to do a few important things, not an unaccountable bureaucracy that's weaponized against us, that imposes its will on us without our consent. We will reconstitutionalize, have reconstitutionalized this government. We will have ended the weaponization of this government, and we will have restored the government to its rightful owners, we, the American people. And there's a lot more to say, but if we can say that we've done that after eight years, then that means we will have restored what Ronald Reagan called the shining city on a hill. Uh, we will have made the country stronger. We will have made the country freer. And we have no other choice but to fight this fight. One of the reasons why I'm motivated to run, my wife and I, we have six, five, and three-year-olds at home. We are in jeopardy of being the first generation of Americans to leave to our kids and grandkids an America less prosperous and less free than the one we inherited. And that will be breaking faith with every previous generation of Americans who always worked hard to make sure that we leave for future generations more opportunity than we have. So I'm motivated to be in the fight uh, to fight for the, our kids, your kids, your grandkids, and for future generations. But I'm also in the fight because I understand we owe a debt to people who've sacrificed for us through previous generations.